four distinctively different pipe tobaccos. Old Briar. Dill's Best. Model. And Tweed present Martin Kane, Private Eye, starring William Gargan. <laughs> Please. Hey, Mark here for you. Oh. Just this note here from Madam. Madam, what does he want? What you want to see you from, Mr. Smith? You <laughs> back in your rent? Oh, hardly, Chester, hardly. You see, Mr. Smith, again it is the same. Always the cards give you the same warning. As a casual man, Mr. Smith, a man of the business world, you cannot afford to deny the knowledge of the cards. <laughs> with, uh, with all due respect, madam, I, well, really, you know, it's, it's all so fantastic. How can a deck of cards foresee the future, or, or the past, for that matter? No, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I can't take all this mumbo-jumbo very seriously, so if you'll uh, <coughs> please excuse me. So be it. It is on your own head. <clears throat> but when evil comes to you, remember well what the, what the cards foretold. And think on this. There are many windows into the future, but for one so gifted, the past, the present, and the future are of a single instant. Oh, yes, 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 of course. I don't mean to doubt your uh, your skill in these matters, but uh, not at all. But all right, if you please uh, allow me. Uh... Mr. Smith, you are a guest at my hotel. Oh, but please, madam, I... Madame Zarnak does not accept money from a friend. Oh, well, that's very kind of you and all that, but uh, I really thought that I should... Good morning, Mr. Smith. Yes, uh, good morning. Oh, uh, madam, madam, Mr. Smith, uh, are you, are you sure? I mean, um, are you absolutely certain? Uh, what I'm trying to say is, uh, is there any chance of uh, error? None. I see. Thank you. Good day. Good morning, my dear. Oh, it's you, Mr. Smith. Yes. <laughs> what do you want at this unearthly hour? Well, you see, it's, uh, it's almost uh, 11 o'clock, and, uh, well, I thought I could drop you off at the theater. You see, I'm taking a cab uptown to my bank. Oh, that's so sweet of you, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Thank you. But, uh, but I ain't working at the Gaiety no more. What? I dropped my last bangle for them boobs last night. You, you mean you actually quit that awful place at last? Well, you've been after me to quit, haven't you? Well, yes, yes. Well, I packed up my gadgets and waltzed right out of that flea bag. Boy, you should have heard that manager squawk. Mildred, I can't <laughs> tell you how delighted I am. Really delighted. Um, hmm? suppose we talk about it later, honey. In private. Oh. Anything I can do for you, Mrs. Parsons? There goes your reputation, Mr. Smith. Oh, Mrs. Parsons' opinion of our acquaintanceship doesn't concern me in the slightest. <laughs> not yes, the slightest. I know, sweetie. Call for me at six. At I'm going to be busy this afternoon. Busy this afternoon. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Well, the uh, door's open. Come on in. 
Mr. Kane? Mr. Martin Kane? That's right. Mr. Kane, I'm in dreadful trouble. I, I want you to help me. I beg of you, please. Well, that's uh, part of my job, to help people. Uh, won't you have a seat, Mr. Uh, 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 Smith? Uh, Warren A. Smith. All right, now have a seat, please. Take it Thank easy and much. let's start at the beginning. My, uh, my life savings, Mr. Kane. $10,300 stolen or lost not, not more than 20 minutes ago. Did you notify the police? Uh, no, no, I, I, I didn't. Why not? Well, because I, I think I know who's behind this terrible business. And, uh, oh, I, I've been such a fool. Such a fool. Well, you still haven't answered my question. Oh, well, well you see, Mr. Kane, there's, there's someone very, very dear to me. And I wouldn't want that person to find out how gullible I've been. A woman, Mr. Smith? Yes. Yes, you see, if I, if I prosecuted well, there'd be investigators, uh, newspaper I men... See. You want me to conduct an investigation on the QT, is yes, that right? Yes, yes, I don't want to prosecute. I just want my money back. All right, now suppose you give me the details. Well, it was at my bank. I had the cash with me, and it was just during the noon rush hour. Yeah. You see, I was going to deposit my money in another bank. Uh, the city savings, as a matter of fact, eight blocks away. I but see. when I got to the city savings, my money was gone, missing from my pocket. Which pocket? Uh, this one, this one. It, it was in a uh, large brown envelope with my signature affixed to the top right-hand corner. Now, what was the idea of switching banks? Oh, that's where I was so incredibly stupid. I did it on the advice of a fortune teller, a Madame Zwinnock. $10,300. I'd no idea how Mr. Smith was so well off. I tell you, madam, it was like bagging a lame pigeon. The easiest dip I ever made. Why, the poor sap never even knew I was in the crowd. Ha! Hold it, madam, see all. I'm taking my cut now. I'm checking out of this bedbug roost. You talk like an idiot, Leo Lynch. You'll stay put till I decide it's safe for you to leave. When you have money, you drink too much and blab everything you know. I said I was checking out of here. Leaving town. I say you'll stay. That's good advice, Leo. I'd take it if I was you. Cops might rumble if a well-known pickpocket like yourself was to suddenly drop out of sight. How did you get in here? Don't tell me you ain't never used the balcony that uh, connects our three rooms, yours, mine, and Leo's. The fire escape. Right, boy. How'd you get wise? Well, Mr. Smith and I are, uh, how shall I put it, close friends? He told you about my readings. Uh-huh. I spotted it for a con job right off. Then when Mr. Smith said he was going down to the bank this morning and I seen our light-fingered little playmate here coming out of this room... Why, well, you sneak Hey, right where you are, Buster. Now, Madam Zwinek, put that envelope on the table. Put it down, right now. Little Mildred will mind it. While the three of us wait for the heat to blow over. You ain't cutting yourself in. No? Maybe you'd rather I talk to the cops. You didn't have that gun... Leo! I... Let her take the money. For the present, Miss Lowe is our partner. But only for the present. <laughs> I thought I heard you locking your door. Uh, would it put you out any to drop this in the mail for me? Not at all, Miss Lowe. Since I have letters of my own to post. Thanks. Thanks loads, dearie. Sure. 
terrible. Terrible. Simply terrible. Simply terrible. Oh, Mr. Smith, I wonder if I could impose upon you. I hate to do this, but you know this awful storm, and yes. I must post these letters. You see, my sister is expecting. That is my sister's daughter. Yes, is I'll, be, I'll be happy to oh, post them for you. Thank you. Thank you. you see, I was going to... Oh, dear. Oh, just clumsy. Oh, no, not at all. It was my fault, I'm afraid. I am so sorry. Mrs. Mrs. Parsons, where did you get this envelope? Why, Miss Lowe asked me to mail it for her. Mr. Smith, is there something wrong? Uh, no. No, it's quite all right. Ah, good morning, Happy. What's the good news? Good news, he says. Me with my cellar filled with water from last night's storm. Oh, I'll send over a pump Jane, sale. Hello, Happy. Oh, How hello, you? Sergeant. Say, did you have time to collect that information for me? No, I certainly did, Mr. Kane. And I must say, your client is residing among brigands and skittle sharps, so to speak. Oh, is that so? Yes, oh, Hap, let me have a pouch of Old Briar, will you? Come on, Marty. Yeah. Old Briar, the master mixture of rare flavor and aroma and just 15 cents a pouch cash. Well, 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 in that event, I'll pay for it. Yeah, Thank you are, very Lynch. much. Ooh. There we are. The, the party known as Leo Lynch is actually Leo Patchfockers Lynch, a, a notorious pickpocket. And Madame Zwinak, although she's been out of circulation for quite some time, is well known by our bunko squad. Oh, confidence rackets, huh? Mm, a veteran of the quick swindle, Mr. Kane. Yes, sir. Just how she acquired ownership of the Wabash Hotel is a matter that will bear looking into. The What's Wabash this Hotel? about the Wabash Hotel, Ross? Well, it's just that I've been checking on the hotel's owner, Captain Burke. As a favor to me, Captain. I might have known it. Kane, how in blazes do you manage to get yourself right smack in the middle of every case I draw? Now, what in the world is he talking about? Now, what in the world is he talking about? He's talking about a burlesque stripper by the name of Mildred Lowe. She was found this morning in her own little bed at the Wabash, strangled. Well, that just about covers all the physical evidence. The medical examiner placed at the time of murder at about three this morning. The murder weapon was two towels knotted together to form a strangler's noose. The room was locked and chained from the inside, and the door was forced open by the porter and Madame Zwinak. And the only entrance besides that was through this window by way of the fire escape. And we didn't find any footprints in the mud down in the alley. Well, obviously an inside job. Oh, the killer must have come from one of the two adjoining rooms connected by the fire escape, Mr. Kane. Yeah. Madame Zwinak's next door or Leo Lynch's beyond that. Uh-huh. Well, I, uh, looks like she might have been drinking a little bit, huh? Well, she's yeah. cracking up all her things. Apparently, uh, yeah. uh, Miss Lowe expected some sort of violence last night. Yes, yes, but it looks like she bent the elbow plenty over there. And, uh, yes! Uh, she certainly mm -hmm. did, because, no. uh, you know, that uh, that that bottle is uh, <laughs> almost she's empty. Drinking she's been drinking room, rather yeah. immoderately, wouldn't you? Immoderately? Yes. Yeah. 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 I'd say like... she'd been boiled. Yeah. <laughs> looks like she slept through her own murder. Well, <sighs> she... that's, uh, that's very funny, Kane. All right, Sergeant, come on. We'll get downstairs and question the guy, that sucker who was taken for his dog. Oh, Mr. Smith is next door, uh, attempting to call Mrs. Parson, Captain. <laughs> So, Captain, you can imagine my, my surprise when Mrs. Parsons handed me the very envelope to which my signature was affixed and which contained my life savings. Oh, there, there, oh. there, there, there. We all know that you were posting that letter to Miss Lowe. Well, how do you figure this stripper got a hold of your case, Well, I, I'm sure I don't know, Roger. Well, why didn't you report your discovery to the police, well, Mr. Smith? Well, that was, my, that was my first intention, but, well, when I got to the police station, I, I just couldn't bring myself to report Mildred. You see... I had hoped that someday Mildred and I would be married. Oh! Oh, turn it off, lady. What? You may get him yet. Had Miss Lower accepted your proposal, Mr. Smith? Well, no, no, not, not exactly, no, no. But, but, but she had taken my advice and left that uh, theater place. Oh, terrible place. And, and she was going to look for more suitable employment. Okay, now suppose you tell us what you did do after you didn't do what you should have done. Uh, after I didn't... 
Yeah. Beg your pardon? After you decided not to report Miss Lowe to the police. Oh, oh, well, well, then, you see, I, I returned to the hotel. You see, I intended confronting Mildred with the letter and well, demanding an explanation. But, but when I got there, I found that Mildred had visitors. And I, I, I heard voices, a rather heated argument going on. I, I heard Madame Zwinnick's voice, and I think I heard Mr. Lynch's. You think? I think it was Mr. Lynch's, yes. All right, well, what are they arguing about? Oh, I couldn't tell you that, Captain. I didn't stay to eavesdrop. Was, so I left the hotel for about an hour, and when I got back, I found Mildred, and, and she was all alone. But, but, but she was so nervous, frightened, uh, so perturbed, in fact, that, well, uh, after a few minutes, I thought I'd better leave. And so, you see, I decided that it was better to talk to her about the envelope in, in the morning, the way she was. Yeah, well, then I suppose you went right straight to bed. Oh, yes, yes. It was almost 9.30. Oh, brother. <laughs> I tell you, I do not know if Mildred Lowe had Mr. Smith's money. And as for this confidence scheme, and my being in league with Leo Lynch, that's just a lot of rubbish. I didn't even know Leo Lynch was a pickpocket. And I'm not in the habit of prying into the background of my guests. If I do, my hotel will be empty. Yes, but madam, you admit that you persuaded the old guy into switching his money into another bank. I told him exactly what I saw in the card. Well, what did you see in that deck for the burlesque queen, madam? Mildred Lowe was a disturbed personality and was destined to a violent end. Now, you don't suppose you could just shuffle those cards and tell me who it was that helped her to make her exit? Could you? Hmm? Why, Captain, are you seeking my professional advice? <laughs> <laughs> If it ain't the private snooper himself. You know, uh, I ought to be sore at you busting into my room this way, mister. I didn't break into your room, Lee. The door was unlocked. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, I got a bad habit of leaving my room open. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a funny thing. I never can think to lock my door till after dark. You know, that's when the uh, creeps generally start uh, prowling these neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. uh, you... Uh, didn't happen to run across a clean shirt anywhere in here, did you? No, but I found something else. Like what, for instance, Kane? This, Captain. Chloral hydrate. Knockout drops. And the bottle's half empty. When I discovered that Mildred, uh, the bottle that Mildred and the glass that she was drinking out of was washed, I decided to look for a few blackout drops. Well, where'd you find them, Kane? Well, some people keep money in mattresses. This fellow used it as a medicine chest. So, this stripper was not only loaded with gin, but she was also drugged. Why did you murder her, Lynch? Did she recover from the effects of the chloral hydrate while you were searching her room for the money? What money? Oh, now, look, Lynch, we happen to know that you were in her room around nine last night, and you were having a hassle with her over old man Smith's money. You're kidding. How did Mildred come to hijack the dough? I repeat, what dough? All right, then. What was that bottle doing in the mattress? I don't know. I never saw the stuff before. Next thing, he'll be claiming that somebody planted it there. Could be. What? I wasn't in my room last night. Just where were you? In, in and out, around the hotel lobby. All night? You know, some nights I just can't sleep. I notice you haven't any towels on your rack, Mr. Lynch. Where are they? Yeah. yeah. Could they be tied around Mildred's neck? Come in, Mr. Smith. The door is open. Oh, it's you, Mr. Kane. I thought it was Mr. Smith. He's been so kind. Well, that's nice. Uh, Mrs. Parsons, do you think you're able to get up and go down to police headquarters? Police headquarters? Yes, you see, Captain Burke is about to arrest Mr. Lynch, and we'll need a statement about Mr. Lynch uh, from everybody that lives on the floor. Of course, it's just routine, and if you don't feel well enough, why oh, we can take I a deposition. Oh, I shan't indulge myself. You know I never yet have shirked my duty as a citizen. I see. I never liked. That man, that Mr. Lynch, shifty. From the first time I laid eyes on him, I said to myself, Agatha Parsons, there is a shifty <laughs> Oh, you. Mr. K. Yes, it's I right wonder now. if you get me a glass of water yes. from the bathroom. Yes, with pleasure. Oh, that door's been permanently locked for ten years, Mr. K. And I'm afraid you'll have to get it through the hall, don't they? A door that's been permanently locked? 
The new key, it doesn't fit. Yes, sir, can I help you? I'd like the pouch of Dill's Best, please. I'd like to see you a man likes a cool smoke. There you are, sir, Dill's Best. Flavor cut for extra mildness and cool smoking. Right you are. Fifteen cents? That's right. Thank you very much. Come in again, eh? Well, 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 welcome, stranger. Say, have you been able to pry a confession loose from that pickpocket Jimmy Valentine yet? Would my blood pressure be doing nip-ups if we had? Well, we were finally able to extract a confession from Patch Pocket's lynch regarding the confidence Swindle Happy. And he also admitted that he and Madame Zwinak were hijacked by Mildred Lowe. However, the gentleman in... Yeah, that jughead insists that he did not strangle the dame. Well, I have a hunch he didn't. Oh, you have a hunch. Mm -hmm. My candidate for the hot seat is the madam. Don't forget, she must have had 12 keys to every room. Happy, you may not know it, but you just mumble a magic word. All right, Kane. Now, suppose mm -hmm. you mumble a word of explanation. Well, if I may bandy a word, men, uh, the key to the uh, crime is key. key. Uh, this key. Well, I'm afraid I don't understand, Mr. Gaines. You will, Sergeant, as soon as we round up all the characters in this little mystery and I uh, unlock the solution. Oh, who's writing his material? Oh, shall we ignore the gentleman and go? <laughs> yes. Oh, <laughs> so long, yeah. Well, how are you, Mrs. Johnson, and what can I do for you, Eddie? Do for him? Well, I'll tell you what you can do for him. You can take back this pipe that you sold him two weeks ago and give him a new one for it. It's just that that, that tastes pretty bad, Hap. I can't seem to break it in at all. Well, let me see. Eddie, there's nothing wrong with this pipe that a good tobacco wouldn't fix it. Oh, I'd like to believe that. Eddie, why don't you smoke the one I smoke? Model. The finest ten cents worth of tobacco your money can buy. Now, Mr. McMahon, I think you're just trying to... Uh, did you say ten cents? Yes, Mrs. Johnson, I said ten cents, and still only ten cents, by the way, and plenty mild, too. Oh, Eddie, smell that. Notice how nice and mild that model is in there? Yeah, that does smell good. Well, if Model smells that good in the pouch, Eddie, you can just imagine how good it's going to smoke in your pipe. Oh, Mr. McMahon, I now think you... Now, look here, Mrs. Johnson. This is something that will interest you very, very much. You see how nice and wide that Model pouch opens at the top there? Well, Eddie can take his pipe and dip it right in there, fill her up without spilling one particle of that tobacco on your rug. Well, I... And, Eddie, <clears throat> when you're finished, you just fold it down nice and tight. That keeps the tobacco good and fresh. Well, this model certainly seems worth a try, huh? Thank you. Here's your dime. Oh, Mr. Johnson. Oh, yes, Mr. McMahon. You, uh, forgot Eddie's pipe. Oh, thank you, Mr. McMahon. Thank you, Mrs. Johnson. Come again. <clears throat> Dear, dear me, I do hope you won't detain us too long, Captain. This is my day to preside as chairwoman of the ladies' after-dinner lecture. Mrs. Parsons, if there's one place in the world I'd like to see you, it's in the chair. I beg your pardon. Presiding over your ladies. Oh, Captain. Oh, Mr. Caden, the Captain says you can name the murderer. I believe I can, madam, but first of all, let us review the facts. We know that the killer got into the room by way of the fire escape. Through your room, Lynch, are yours, Duchess. And uh, we know that the bottle that Mildred, Mildred drank out of was full of uh, dope. Given by Mr. Smith. He found out Mildred had his money. For your information, Madam Swinney, that money was in my possession some six hours before Mildred was murdered. Yes, you didn't know that, did you, Duchess? Wait a minute. Now I get it. Sure. She's got a key to every room in this crumb joint. Now I know why she wanted me to hang around the lobby all night. It wasn't to make sure that dame didn't sneak out. It was so she could steal my towels and plant them knockout drops in my mattress. That's a lie. All right, now that's enough of that. Now, come on, Marty. What's the answer? Well, the answer to it is right here in this shiny key, a key I found in the door that had been locked for ten years. The killer put it there, knowing it was the last place in the world that we would think to look for it, in Mrs. Parsons' room. My room? Yes. Mr. Kane, Mildred Lowe's room was locked and chained from the inside. Of what possible significance is that key? Well, the killer got onto the fire escape with this key by way of uh, Lynch's room. All oh. right, then who did it? Suppose we let Mrs. Parsons tell us. Me? Mrs. Parsons, uh, the day after the murder, who was in your room? Well, you and, and Sergeant Ross and the captain and Mr. Smith. There's your killer, Captain Warren Smith. <gasps> what? Oh, well, yes. this is fantastic. Ridiculous. So that's how you work today. You used that key to go through my room while I was on guard down in the lobby. You, you, you swiped my towels to choke that dame with. Then you planted those knockout drops in my mattress. 
Why, you crummy old hypocrite. You almost framed me right into the chair. You... All right, Sergeant. All right. Take All right. Him Come along, Mr. Get him out of here. Come along. I had All right, you not Smith. to resist. Now, you can be my guest. Now, just a moment. That, that, that key doesn't prove I murdered Mildred. I was in love with her. I had my money. I, I, I had no reason to kill her. Love is a very unpredictable emotion, Mr. Smith. Sometimes it does some funny twists, warps a man's imagination. Especially when the object of that love is a tramp, caught red-handed in a $10,000 double Oh, you can't bluff me, Mr. Kane. You have no evidence. That key doesn't prove anything. According to the law, every locksmith has to leave his seal of his work. I checked with the locksmith that made this key. According to the description of the man who paid for it, you fit it exactly. Shall we dance? Well, you can say that again, Sergeant. When any guy Smith's age sets his cap for a gal in a burlesque line, uh, dynamite. <laughs> you know, this case has a, a rather unique aspect, Happy. For instance? Well, all the suspects were eventually arraigned. Smith for murder, and Madame Sweenak and Leo Lynch for the confidence swindle. All the suspects? Mm-hmm. How about this one? Oh, hello, Parson. Oh, Sergeant Ross. Well, I'm so glad I found the right place. This is Happy McMahon's tobacco shop, isn't it? No, no, madam. Oh, well, then, where is Mr. Kane? You know, he promised to give me an hour of his time tonight. Oh, for what purpose? Well, uh, you mustn't breathe a word of it oh, to Mr. Kane. It's a surprise. A surprise? Oh, a delightful surprise. You know, I called a special meeting of the Ladies' After Dinner Lecture Society, and Mr. Mr. Kane is to be the guest speaker. Oh, oh Martin! <laughs> Don't you dare leave. There's a lady waiting to speak oh, to you. Oh, Mr. Kane, I'm so glad that you're not late. Uh, well, shall we hurry? Um, I have a very delightful surprise. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm at your disposal, Mrs. Well, Parsons. Let's, uh, uh, well, we mustn't be tardy, uh, Mr. Kane. Come along. Yes, yes, let's not be tardy. Oh, Happy, how could you? <laughs> I could, and I did. Good night, Martin. <laughs> Good luck, Mr. K. Watch those splint infinitives, son. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, folks. See you next week. Martin Kane, Private Eye, has been brought to you by the makers of those four distinctively different pipe tobaccos. Old Briar, the master mixture of rare flavor and aroma. Dill's Best, flavor cut for extra mildness and cool smoking. Models so high in quality, so low in price. And Tweed, the shaggy rough cut tobacco. One of the four, just right for your tobacco taste. William Gargan also appears weekly in the other exciting series of Martin Kane, Private Eye, on radio over another network. Check your local newspaper for time and station. NBC Television. Mm -hmm.